Hello everybody, welcome to Telly Talks. This episode is sponsored by Classic Cat and 8Lab. I have a very special guest with me today, Udos, and we're gonna talk about how you got to where you are in your journey. So cheers to your cheers. success and all that you're doing for the community, for women, for children, and all that good stuff. Thank you, well thank you for having me and um I'm really excited to be on your show. I know all of the great work that you do on the podcast, you. and you're amazing. You're Thank so beautiful. You, you don't need you. anything, like Thank I said. You. you know, you too, girl. I love women empowering women, and that's something that we're going to touch on today. So for the people that don't know who you are, can you tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, okay. So originally I'm Persian. I grew up in Sweden, and then I moved to San Diego and went to school for uh, marketing and advertising at San Diego State. And then when I was there, I started kind of realizing like, you know, I want to do some entertainment stuff and things like that. But then in between there, I went to Vancouver, Canada, and then I was in Vancouver and, you know, um, some people there, they're like, hey, you should try acting, you should try modeling, you know, you should try this and that. And, and I was like, wow, people think I'm pretty and people think I'm like talented, but more than anything, to, for me to hear that I was pretty growing up in Sweden. Gorgeous, by the way. Oh, thanks, thanks. I'm like, is this my good angle? <laughs> <laughs> all the angles, girl, yeah. all the angles, got all the angles. So um, I was just like, you know, really like, wow, people think I'm beautiful because growing up in Sweden, since I wasn't blonde and blue eyed and, you know, tall, skinny, like I was exactly the opposite of what was defined as beautiful there. So that was like a huge surprise to me that anyone ever thought that I look good or pretty or anything, right? So I was like, wow, people think I'm pretty. People think I can model. Wow, like a whole world of opportunities are just opening up for me now. This is amazing. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I tried it a little bit there and I got some acting credits and some modeling, uh, like uh, traditional modeling with like press and print and all that kind of right. stuff. And then I obviously like uh, went back to San Diego and then LA. So then I continued that whole journey there, but I was really like taking off. I was taking like directing, editing classes and acting classes. And I went to Groundlings. I did comedy, dramatic acting and comedy and everything. Everything was just going smooth. And then I used my marketing um, kind of background to start marketing for companies uh, like Funny or Die and What the Funny. And I was creating comedy content for them and marketing it on social media. And that was like in the beginning of social media, it was right when Instagram started and Vine and all of these platforms, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I started quickly realizing that okay, when I do these little videos and little snippets, um, all of the following and everything obviously goes to these platforms. So why don't I just do it for myself? Absolutely. And at that time, nobody was really like doing comedy, like the way I looked and, you know, doing things like right. that. It was kind of like a new kind of thing. And I was like, okay, I know that people are gonna look at me and they're like, oh, she's a woman, she's not gonna be able to do this or that. So let me do like sexy, funny and that kind of stuff, right? right. So I started doing that and then it just kind of took off and it started going viral and everybody was reposting and it was going on a popular page and all of the good stuff. So now I have some acting background, some modeling and you know, all of this. Comedy, and, yeah. Yeah, and then social media and I was just taking off and I was like literally at my peak. Like I had all these followers and that was like brand new and everything was amazing. And then all of the sudden, like uh, somebody contacts me and they're like, hey, you are on this like iCloud hack list. And I'm like, what does that even mean? And, um, it was in 2014 and I was just like, what? what? I just got iCloud and I don't even understand what it is. Right. It's like the pictures get saved to the cloud. You don't lose them. Like, that's it. Right, right. That's, <laughs> that's what right. I think it is. You yeah. Know? So, okay. So what, how did, how did this hack list even come about or how were you even on it? So that was the whole thing for me. I was just like, okay, it's a hack list. And they're saying that. Uh, they got people's intimate images and videos. So now in my head, I'm like, well, I really didn't take any pictures myself uh, that right. was really bad. I always like covered it up. And if I sent anything to a boyfriend, it was like something similar of like a 
modeling picture or bikini right. or something, something that like that. Something that you were comfortable having out. Yeah, exactly. So even if it got leaked, I wasn't really concerned with it. I right. was just like, ah, okay, it's not a big deal. Right. But then, um, you know, the actual hack happened, right? And then the actual leak happened. So they auctioned this off uh, with that list. And then all of these people on the dark web, they were betting on us like we're some animals or something, right? Oh, wow. And uh, there was Jennifer Lawrence on this list and Kate Upton, I mean, Scarlett Johansson and all these like big name A-list celebrities. And me, like I was just coming up. I didn't even think, like, why would anyone want to hack me? I didn't think anything of it, right? And then uh, finally, after all that time and they collected enough money and stuff, the actual leak happens. And I'm like shooting, didn't even like um, think anything of it. And then all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up and everybody's like, oh my God, did you see this? Uh, you like the, your stuff leaked from the iCloud and blah, blah, blah. And I look and I realize, oh my God, this is like the same video and a couple pictures that my ex-boyfriend two years prior to that threatened me with because I was ignoring him for six months. And then he threatened me with those because like he took them against my consent or even my knowledge. Right. And then he used them as like a kind of a tool, like if anything like happens. Blackmail situation. Yeah. Right. So all this time goes by. I didn't even think about like, oh, he threatened me with those in my iMessage. iMessage right. gets stored in the iCloud, iCloud. Mm -hmm. because what the hell? Nobody even knew what the hell the cloud was at right. that time. Right. right. And how it works. So... Yeah, it was just the worst moment in my life. Like my heart just sank and I was just like like what like how can this even happen, you know? Right. You spend your whole life like working so hard and doing everything right, following the law, following all the rules and doing everything that you're supposed to to be a nice person, a good person, hardworking, educated, right. you know, speak all these languages and do all all of the right things and then even when you do all the right things it still happened so it was just kind of like what like how does this happen so right. I, I just what I did I just went home and I just isolated myself for you know weeks months I mean it just ended up being years after a while like I honestly like was terrified of going out because everybody I would like talk to or link up with or anything they would always bring it up and then the worst part was that all of those influencers and actors and people like actresses that I thought were my friends at the time they all turned on me they were all like using this as a tool to bully me they like would go to everyone and tell everyone that I was secret secretly shooting porn Oh, wow. And, like, literally try to, like, blacklist me from everything. So, like, they would reach out to brands, telling brands don't work with her because she's doing porn now. They, they were going to, like, um, everybody I would work with, they would tell them that. So then all of a sudden, those people would stop working with me, you know. And then it was, was even getting worse because they would go to, like, Instagram and everyone they, they can think of and just basically say, oh, she's shooting porn, don't do this and don't right. do that. And I never really understood it, but now, like, looking back, it kind of makes sense because I had more followers than them on Instagram, and these were people from Vine. So, like, when... Transitioning to Instagram, Exactly. Right. And now it all makes sense, but at the time, I was just, like... You know, I was young, naive. I, I was like, well, I always been nice to them. I don't understand why they're right. not being nice back. And, you know, very um, naive thinking, you know. And even, like, you know, dating and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, honestly, now looking back, I'm like, I should have never dated anyone. I should have just <laughs> sat my ass at home and just worked and, like, not yeah. dealt with anything. But it's like you can't. It's hard when things are out of your control. Yeah. And it's like, you know, how did you kind of transition from, you know, isolating yourself from that situation to coming back to light and using your platform as a space to kind of help the community of, you know, the situation of what you went through. Yeah, so I think that whole time period, all I did was just isolate myself and work. So 
Um, I, I noticed that about me when things get hard. I just start working really hard. I'm the same way. I'm the same way because it takes your mind off of the actual problem. Exactly. So you kind of make something to like easier. Like my therapy always is like cleaning up. Like my my OCD kicks in yeah. when I'm so busy and then I'm like, okay, I have this to do, that to do, this to do, that to do, this yeah. to do. And then you realize like you're adding more to your plate to try to get rid of something that you not necessarily can really get rid of exactly you know so it's almost like that feeling that you're trying to mask by yeah. using other things to like mask it and like with me I organize or I clean or I like overly clean like okay. to where my <laughs> pantry is like you know this the salt goes here the pepper goes here yeah the broth goes here yeah don't put the eggs anywhere but the eggs place like yeah. everything has a place so it's to me that just makes it more comforting for mm -hmm. me when I have so much going on, and I'm sure you have so much going on in your life that, you know, you just try to, like, make sure everything's in order. Yeah. I mean, first off, if you ever have any OCD issues or, like, anything <laughs> happening in your life, you're free to come over to my place. Oh, my gosh, girl. <laughs> I I'm like, help I, me. <laughs> I literally went to one of my friend's houses, and her bathroom was a mess. And I yeah. could like, I was getting anxiety, and I couldn't function. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to help her clean her bathroom. Mm -hmm. I was there. Like, I was there to pick her up for lunch, and I was there for, <laughs> like, like, six hours yeah. organizing her bathroom. Like, okay, makeup goes here. Brushes goes here. Yeah like hair tools go here this yeah. is the place for it don't move it don't fuck it up when i leave don't call yeah. me three days later <laughs> but literally like i just love doing that because yeah. it's like you just get more done when you're in a less chaotic space you yeah, know no, and I, it's just more I like oh, okay this is where this goes this is where that goes mm -hmm. so i'm right there with you on the like organization and just getting everything like you know just staying busy yeah to get everything done and just make it more sufficient for yourself exactly and i i totally agree with the your mind can think clearer when mm -hmm. you're uh, organized and you know what everything is it's just like decluttering i love just throwing everything away yeah. Like, my friend came over, and they're like, where's all your stuff? It's, like, empty. Like, nobody lives here. I'm like, oh, I just declared it. I just, like, literally, like, threw everything in the trash. <laughs> no, oh, like, so that, no, definitely, like, keep the stuff that you know is yeah. important, but don't hoard either. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, like, don't, don't, don't. Don't keep stuff that you don't need, but just like, you know, just to have a place for everything. Like yeah. my, my closet is from white to black yeah. and colors in between my shoes from nude or white to black. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's just, it just makes things easier for me. If like, Hey, I want to wear a blue outfit today. Yeah. If I want to match blue with this, whatever, yeah. just makes it so much easier. But like, just going back to topic, just staying busy yeah. when you're trying to avoid a situation. Yeah. So what did you do to stay busy? So what I did was I focused on creating comedy content. So I just kept shooting with only a very few people that I knew that you trusted. I trusted and that's not gonna focus on that and they're not gonna badmouth me and you know that kind of thing and I just kept shooting content. So I just kept shooting content, posting it, and it was going viral. Like I was probably going viral all the time on all the platforms because I was doing nothing else except mm -hmm. for that. And you know, the comments were just horrible. So I, I wouldn't like, I would just focus on creating more content. So I wouldn't even look at the comments. Right. I wouldn't even focus on anything. So all the time I was like a machine. And then I think that what also happened with all of these uh, bullies that had all of these followers and this and that, they were like, oh, wow, we encourage her to kill herself. We encourage her to like, you know, just give up. And we bullied her. We put her in these like group text messages and posting the video of her there, posting her like private images in there, try to like make her feel bad. They did literally everything to make me feel bad. And I just kept going. I just kept right. going. So when they start seeing that, that they were just like going even harder and harder, right? But I just put my head down and kept going. And then it took me uh, eight years to come public about it because all of the publicists and agents, I mean, everyone was like, don't talk about it. If you talk about it, then you bring more attention more to it. it right. And, you know, uh, if you bring more attention to it, then everybody's going to dig it up all over again. So... Uh, after all this time, I, I was just thinking to myself, like, well, you know, it's happening to me all the, you know, everybody knows that already. And then it happened to so many other young women, um, boys, you know, that's another miscon 
misconception. People think that this whole only happens to women and girls, but it happens to a lot of young teenage boys. And Absolutely. young teenage boys are more likely to commit suicide over this. And a lot of these cases is like sextortion and those type of things, right? So I was like, okay, well, it's happening to all of these women, right? And the more you start digging, you start seeing, oh my God, they're like after the children, mm -hmm. actually. So it's like women and children and, you know, a lot of, it's happening to a lot of men, like they're getting catfished, so they send a picture and then they start losing all this money and they're getting blackmailed. Right. But I'm like, nobody's talking about it because there's so much shame around it, you know? So at what point is somebody going to talk about it? Right. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, well, <laughs> I already pretty much lost everything. And like lost money, opportunities, like followers, uh, you know, uh, friends, family, you name it. I lost everything. Like what else is there to lose? Right. Why don't I just change the law and like fix something here because the, the needs to be fixed, like you know. Absolutely. So just like how you like organizing and like, okay, well, there's a problem here. We need to fix it. Solution, absolutely. Yeah. So that was kind of my my thought process, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna change the law, and let's just go for it. So I started getting in touch with like lobbyists and senators and. Uh, reps and constituents, I mean, you name it, any and everyone and like the nonprofits and all that good stuff. And basically what happened, I connected to one of the reps out of Massachusetts and we created like a sample bill of uh, what is now the Protect Act. So we created a sample bill and then I sent that to Nkozi. Nkozi had a prior bill um, that they actually introduced. So we kind of put everything together and then other people also like gave their advice on like what could be better, what needs to be done as far as like, for instance, deep fake technology and all of this new technology stuff that's going on, right? And um, so they, when, you, when you created the bill, yeah. how many signatures and what did you need to do to create that bill for like people that want to, you know, create a bill or change a law? How was that process? So what, what happened to me in my case, I got really lucky because when I went public, I got reached out to by that rep from Massachusetts mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, I really like what you're trying to do. And uh, why don't we, you know, create a law like the one that you want for this, right? So I started like a small petition, but honestly, like the petition, it has nothing to do with really Generating like- a bill. Yeah, like the petition is just like something extra, but honestly, like a lot of these senators and people, they don't really care so much about the petition per se. It's more about like uh, who's gonna co-sponsor and you know, who's gonna support Who it. you have on your side. Exactly. So that was uh, what, like along the way, I'm like learning all this stuff, of course. Like I didn't know a lot of this stuff because I didn't even grow up here. I didn't even know how the laws and everything work. So okay. I had to learn a lot, like investigate everything, ask a lot of questions and, um, you know, kind of take it one step at a time, right? So um, when the bill was done with uh, Nkozi and me and all of these kind of things, they sent it to Senator Mike Lee. So Mike Lee, basically, he's, a, he's very smart. He's a lawyer. He knows what he's doing, right? right. He like writes up bills like left and right. So he put together... Um, this is all in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. No, Senator Mike Lee is, um, is another senator. So he's a state senator. For uh, for uh, Utah, am I saying that right? Okay, so you had yeah. Massachusetts and Utah in this bill mm -hmm. to create this law. So Massachusetts is not in this bill. Okay. So Massachusetts, we're coming back to that later. But okay. like um, Senator Mike Lee is basically the one that like introduced this bill last year. Okay. So he introduced it last year, but he wanted to in, like introduce it by himself, right? Mm -hmm. So he introduced it, and uh, right now it's about to be reintroduced um, as a bipartisan bill. So we have other senators, you know, involved. So he's a Republican, and then there's the Democrats now. So it's going to be a bipartisan bill. That's and I'm like, everyone should just want to protect children online. You Absolutely. know, it's just like bipartisan Absolutely. issue. Especially nowadays. Like, I have 
eight kids, so mm. from ages 18 to five years old. Yeah. And they all have iPads, they all have computers, they, they all, you know, use technology, and technology yeah. is huge nowadays, especially with all the things that's going on with AI and just like the access that they have to the internet and just seeing these things and what they're teaching these kids at mm -hmm. such a young age, even in the like, you know, um, the realm of you putting restrictions on your iPads for these kids, yeah. there's still like, you know, same sex stuff. There's still like um, adult, um, what I want to call is like almost soft porn. Like, you know, yeah. like my, my five-year-old, knows i mean obviously you kiss your kids when they're young but they mm -hmm. don't know the depth of how you know an no. intense a kiss can be or like yeah. kissing other parts and stuff like that like that is not something that like children should know at exactly. such a young age yeah that there needs to be some type of like okay hold on how can we put restrictions on like you know things that we might not want to teach our kids at home or mm -hmm or at school and, and things of that nature. Yeah, so uh, what you're talking about is great and like that's another type of uh, like bill. Um, there's a bunch of other bills that are actually covering those issues uh, where it basically um, limits what kids or children can see. So some states, they actually blocked off where they can't access, for instance, Pornhub or, right. you know, like those type, yeah. yeah, those type of things of just like, you know, whatever you can learn that yeah. might not be something that you might not want to learn or like how not to bully instead of like bullying yeah. on like cartoons and stuff like that. Just, yeah. you know, overall, just negative things that were in Impacting in these kids' mind or yeah. these or anyone's mind for that nature. Because yeah. I feel like what is sold and what is pushed out in media is all negativity. Yeah. You don't watch the news and hear like, oh, um, Udos is over here <laughs> trying to create a bill. Like, yeah. you know, you watch the news and you see like buildings getting blown up or yeah. terrorist attacks and stuff like yeah. that. You don't see like the positive things that's impacting the world and the change that people are trying to make yeah. on like a good angle instead of like a bad angle exactly and i think that that's um another thing that i want to encourage people because um you don't really understand how broken the system is i think people know by now that yeah, the system absolutely. is broken right but like once you get into it like you start understanding the bills and you start looking at the laws and then you hear all of these survivor stories i mean there's survivor stories from all walks of life especially within the image-based sexual abuse but there's so many different stories there's so many different ways that they can become uh, victims of image-based sexual abuse absolutely and even other causes, like you look at like trafficking victims and, you know, how the justice system, just looking at everything and you're just like, the the laws weren't really there to create, to like the, to protect especially women and children. Like, you know. So how is it like, for example, if we were to, like for a situation like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say. Like, let's say in my phone, you know, whatever private pictures I send to my man and then it comes back and you get hacked and then now it's out everywhere. Is there like a procedure that you can go about maybe, I guess, suing that person? If how, like, how would you find out who did it and like, you know, how it came about? Is that like a, like, yeah. So currently there's no laws against that. Like so they can put out your information. Whatever they want. If any hacker could do what they want. If they put up a hidden cam in your bedroom and you don't know, like somebody can just break in or they can just access your webcam on your computer and just hack that, they can see you get undressed. They can put a hidden cam in the bathrooms, uh, in hotels. Like that's what's going on a so lot now. So there's no Privacy Act law or bill that says yeah. that you're not allowed to enter any private sector of my yeah. life or private nope. tech equipment that's why we need the protect act Absolutely. Like, that's why i'm like we need the protect act so basically what the protect act does is that it holds online platforms accountable so that um you know anyone that wants to upload uh 
content like let's say they're a sex worker or whatnot all they have to do is just uh, upload their id verification and consent of everyone in the video right mm -hmm. sounds very straightforward right right if you're consenting and you're an adult like what is the problem right right because for instance, Pornhub, like 80% of their content was unverified recently. So they had to delete 80% of their content because their whole business model is basically on just non-consensual content. Mm. So when you start understanding that, so now you're looking at like, oh, people are just watching porn thinking, oh, there's nothing to it. These are people that want to do that. Right, right, that's getting paid. Absolutely. Yeah, and you would think that, but no, that's not actually the case. Even like, for instance, if they are a sex worker, their content a lot of times are stolen and put on that platform. Mm. So like... It's like either you're watching someone's rape or it's a child or, you know, it's like non-consensual video. Right. But like if you start digging deeper into it, like uh, so the most popular search terms on, for instance, uh, for instance, Pornhub and all these other porn sites is teen, uh, schoolgirl, like uh, rape, um, hacked, you know, leaked, those kind of kind of subjects right right so then you're starting to wonder well why would people want to watch that exactly. wouldn't they want to watch uh, something consensual like someone that actually wants to do porn that's a porn star that right. can like enjoy it With or a, something a, um, you know a good thing that you know they have you know uh do you know who chris henson is yeah. The mm -hmm. guy, yeah. So that's a good thing that they're like, you know, how to catch a predator. Yeah. Things like that are, you know, I existing. But yeah. 110%, you need some type of privacy protection act yeah. to, to stop all of this because that's, one, it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. It ties into mental health, you know, depression, anxiety for the people that do have to go through these situations mm -hmm. and encounter these situations unbeknownst to their own, you know, thinking that it's yeah. going to happen in the first place. Yeah. So 110%. So how does someone get involved in being a part of an act like that? So, okay, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you could get involved. So one of them is obviously like contacting your senators and telling them like, hey, we need the PROTECT Act. Um, there's also obviously the petition on change.org. Uh, it's change.org slash PROTECT Act. And then there is my nonprofit, Foundation Raw and uh, Protect America's Daughters. And if you want, donate. You can get resources on there. And... Uh, also, there's other ways, like uh, if you want something taken down, for instance, we can help with that and kind of guide you through that. Or there's also like somebody that actually physically does all the work for someone, mm -hmm. you know. And even if you're underage, if you're like a child or whatnot. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved. But I think the biggest one is to reach out to your senators, tell them that you really need this bill, post on social media, bring more awareness to it, talk about it, tell other people, I don't know, like you, whatever you can Absolutely. do. That's why I'm like, I'm on this podcast and, Absolutely. you know, Just spread the word, spread yeah. the word and, and raise awareness and raise funds to get this thing going because it's super essential. Yeah. So outside of that, have you been able to find someone to date? Are you looking to date? Are you solely focused on this? Are you married to your, 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 I guess your reason why? Yeah, so, you know, I, um, and even when all this stuff happened, I dated and I, like, did all that. But honestly, like, uh, I don't think I want to date. I don't want to be with anyone. <laughs> yeah, you're happy with that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I'm either. just, like, because it, from looking back, like, I mean, obviously, I've worked on myself now. Absolutely. And, like, I healed a lot of things within myself, even that and the, all the trauma that came with that. And, you know, uh, I ex-boyfriends and people that I would date, uh, even if they were understanding of it, their family members would bring it right. up. And that, and now I'm at a point where I don't care. Like, you know, the worst has already happened. What are you going to say? It's not right. going to hurt me, right? Um, but I just don't need to, like, spend all this time and get disappointed. And what is this guy's objectives? And, like, um, find out if there's lies or, you know, I don't want to deal with any of that right now. So I'm right. just like... 
you know what? I'm happy. I don't have any problems. I sleep when I want. I do what I want. <laughs> like, you <laughs> Amen. know, Amen yeah. to that. There's nothing like, wrong with that. I don't have any problems, no suspicions for anything. And that's, yeah. that's a good place to be, a clear mind. So for everyone yeah. that comes on, we play this game. Yeah. Um, dirty oh, Minds. Game. Oh, Dirty Minds. But it's Ooh. the cleanest, cleanest. Okay, it's described as the world's cleanest, dirtiest game. Oh. So we're going to describe something, uh -huh. and you're going to guess, and I'm going to guess I'm going to play with you too. Um, we're going to guess, you can pick wherever, how, uh, let's do three cards each. Okay. So I'll pick, pick three, and you pick three, and then um, we're going to describe something, and we're going to guess what we're describing. Okay, I don't know why I picked it like that, but... No, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to do actually the same thing, so it's super random. So do I take one at a time, or...? Yeah, one at a time. Okay. Okay. So I'll go first, so you can kind of... So I'm describing a word, mm -hmm. and you're going to guess what the word is that I'm describing. Okay? Okay. Okay. Playing with my knobs start me flowing. You'll need a towel after you're done with me. Grabbing my hose can make me spray... If I can't stop dripping, consult a professional. If you're if you're under me too long, you'll start to shrivel. Balls? It? No, it's oh, a the... faucet. Oh. <laughs> Remember, okay. <laughs> Wait, I main thought this point was of dirty the, stuff. <laughs> that's what it is. So it's described dirty, but it's oh. a clean word. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> See, I went straight to dirty. She's of like course. balls. Balls. <laughs> I was thinking, like, either penis or balls. Like, <laughs> all right, it's on you. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, let's see. Um, I'm six inches long. Lincoln sits on my face. If you blow your wad, I'm gone. I can give you five big ones before I'm spent. I'm small and wrinkled while I'm still in your pants. Six inches long? Yeah, long. And Lincoln sits on my... Lincoln sits on my face? Yeah. And what was the last clue? I'm small and wrinkled while I'm still in your pants. I have no clue. Okay. So okay, wait, wait, wait. What, what was the second clue? Okay. Uh, Lincoln sits on my face. After that one. If you blow your wad, I'm gone. Six inch. I'm trying to think of like, what is six inches long that's in your pants? Other than. <laughs> right, other than what's in your pants that the, the man has. But I'm like, Lincoln sits I on I mean, this face. game just like goes straight to, to that. dirty thoughts, right? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Because I have no $5 clue. bill. Oh my gosh! I, and I was thinking of the nickel out or oh, nickel. Who does the nickel have on? It's not Lincoln. So I was like, and it's six inches. Yeah. Five dollar bill. Okay. I would have never guessed. That. I would have never guessed this either. I oh, would have gone straight to like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it is? What we think like, it is? Don't okay. worry, I got you. <laughs> okay. All right, this one. Oh my god. Some, <laughs> some people try to plunge into me without getting their head wet. Using long, smooth strokes while you're inside me will get you somewhere. You can use your long noodle in me. Coming in me too quickly could give you goosebumps. If I don't get pumped regularly, it's not healthy. Okay, say it again. <laughs> um, a good clue that is uh, coming in me too quickly could give you goosebumps. You could use a long noodle in me. Using long, smooth strokes while you're inside of me will get you somewhere. Some people, some people try to plunge into me without getting their head wet. That's a good one. A pool? A pool. Oh, wow. Good job, uh, girl. That's the only time I didn't think the dirty. Love it. <laughs> like, I feel like once you hear the clues more, yeah. you're like, okay, what other yeah. than something dirty would this be? Yeah. I think the one that you said was like, I was like, okay, that's the clue right there because <laughs> I don't want to get my hair wet. <laughs> All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes your dog comes on me. 
uh, when you're on me, you're looking for beaver. I'm a four letter word. I end in unt. If your gun is loaded, you're ready to do me. Hunt? Yeah. Hunt? Yeah. Okay. I was like, wait. You got it. That was fast. Yeah. I was like a four letter word that ends in unt. I was like, there's only a few words. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, bunch. Yeah. I'm over here <laughs> like putting the words together. <laughs> All right. Last one. Yeah. When I get real wet, you should get me off. You can use your toes to get me off. I come in a box before you stick it in me. I come in pairs. If I'm too big for you, you could slip out. Flip flops? Close, but I'll give it to you. Slippers? Shoes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's, it's, it's within the vicinity. Yeah. No, yeah, well, it was close. All right. Um, okay, ready? I can handle 12 men at once. If I'm hung, you can do it again. A woman can sit on me. My box can hold a dozen members. Uh, pleading with me can get you off. Okay, something to do with politics. 12, a courthouse? It's close. Um, uh, What's in the courthouse? Representatives? Jury? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's somewhere. I was like, 12 members. Yeah. It has to be something to do with My like, God, these are so dirty sounding. Right? But like they're so like... clean, right? <laughs> yeah. So tell everybody where they could find you, what okay. you guys have going on, your nonprofit, how they can donate, all that good stuff. Okay, great. So you can find me on social media. It's uh, at U-L-D-O-U-Z. And also uh, check out my nonprofit. It's Protect America's Daughters and Foundation Raw. Uh, also on, on Instagram. And uh, the website is up, obviously. And uh, change.org slash protect act. Make sure you sign the petition. And also you can email your senators from there as well. And if you're a survivor, you can actually um, basically uh, sign the survivor letter. And if you're a survivor and need any kind of help, you can reach out to me on uh, protectamericasdaughters.com. Absolutely. Make yeah. sure you guys reach out to her and get any help that you want um, using what she's trying to do with the Protect Act. Sign the change.org list. And, um, you know, if you know anyone that needs the help too, please refer them over. And that is it for Telly Talks. <laughs>